what is going on guys rango vidzamango 12 here and we are reviewing the amazing spider-man issue 2 so yeah this video was supposed to be out like like a month ago but i was really busy with college and like i've just finished my final few weeks of college and stuff like that so now i'm completely finished and i can get these videos out quicker issue 3 should be out in like the next few days i'm actually going getting it tomorrow uh but yeah so before we kick off this comic i just want to announce the winner that was supposed to be announced a month ago. But yeah, Aaron Curtis, you... By, well, I think that you put the best comment and like the most memorable part is specifically at that point in the Superior Spider-Man series. Most of you were kind of going to when Peter got his body back, which I kind of should have thought about because obviously we want Peter back and back. Uh, I didn't really think that one through. But yeah, so... Congratulations and thank you for commenting and I hope you enjoy your com blah, blah, blah. I know you said your comment uh, your comic. <laughs> but yeah, so for the rest of you, it wasn't like I just didn't see your comments or anything like that. I actually took about twelve of you and narrowed it down to that one. So there's always chance that you can win in the future, so don't hesitate to comment and submit your answer and stuff like that. So yeah, I'll be doing more giveaways in the future and yeah uh, I look forward to it and now let's get into the comic. Alright, so to kick off this issue, we actually have what I thought was Mary Jane in her apartment, like, trying to find a video and stuff, but then she shot either, I think it's Spiderweb because it says Thwip or Schwip, and I actually think it might be Spider-Woman, but then again, it kind of looks like electricity powers as well, so I'm not entirely sure, but she's watching the Spider-Man and Electro fight that was, like, caught on video or something like that, but then we go back to Anna Maria and Peter, so, or is it Anna Marie? I, oh, I don't know, whatever. But yeah, so in the last issue, we actually got to the point where she found out that Peter Parker is actually Spider-Man and stuff like that. And he actually turns around to her and says that the actual truth, which I thought was really good, and especially the way it was delivered as well. He just came out and said that it wasn't him and it was Dr. Octopus. And she straight away, she needed some kind of coping method. So she just starts cooking. That's awesome. If... Seriously, someone that cooks to cope with something that, mate, imagine how much food and cookies you'd get, that'd be so good. But yeah, so she's literally, I think she's going to work, she's getting some air and stuff like that. And this is pretty much where Peter actually realises how much power Doc Ock had over his life. I mean, he even changed his ringtones on his phone. His ringtones? How evil! But yeah. So, then we actually go to what looks to be Electro going back to one of his ex-girlfriends or like one of his girlfriends or his sister. So, okay, probably not his sister actually, I'll take that back, bloody hell. But yeah, uh, and he actually needs somewhere to stay and stuff like that. And then we go back to Captain America and the Avengers and Spider-Woman and Iron Man and Tony Stark and Spider-Man and all this. And they're actually trying to figure out whether Spider-Man is Spider-Man, whether it's the real Peter Parker back in his body. So they take tests and of course Peter's messing about, saying all these jokes, making a bit of a mess about all of it and stuff like that. And then all of a sudden he just cracks Captain America in the face. And it was actually over Flash Thompson because Captain America knew that Flash Thompson was the Venom soldier. And Peter didn't like that. Captain America kept that sort of secret away from him, but then again, Peter's kind of doing the same thing with his secret identity, so they kind of worked it out, and that's when they realised that Peter was the actual Peter and stuff like that. So yeah, uh, then we go back to, what is it, Peter Parker Industries, I think it's called, I cannot remember, but yeah, we have to remember that Peter Parker has other responsibilities now, because he actually has his own company. So as he arrives there, he's actually approached with the problem of trying to fix the cybernetics nanites machine. And it turns out that he doesn't actually know how to do that. But Anna Marie actually says that she knows how to do it and Dr. Octopus explained it to her a dozen times. So she'll teach him. And then we go back to Electro and how this girl actually wants to kiss him and stuff. And he's saying no. But anyway, it happens. And he bas it basically implodes her type of thing. And something happens to her. We're not entirely sure. Maybe he's just absorbed her or he's killed her. We have no idea. Then once again, we're actually back with Anna Marie and Peter Parker. Now, if you do remember, remember in the last issue where Peter Parker was running around naked with his mask on and he had to web, like, pants onto himself? Yeah, well, he still hasn't gotten rid of that because Dr. Octopus changed the compounds in his webbing so his web doesn't dissolve. So he's actually stuck with this web underwear around him or something like that. It's dead funny. And he actually discovers that it's there's like a dissolvent in the drawer on the left. 
Anyway, moving on to the Spider-Man fight with Electro and stuff like that. Uh, it turns out that Dr. Octopus actually experimented on Electro, causing him to like lose control of his powers and stuff like that. His powers are really unstable, and he obviously Peter Parker doesn't know this, but he blames Spider-Man pretty much, even though he has no idea what he's talking about. And I absolutely love the dialogue here, especially the uh, you know the art, just how it's laid out to tell the story and stuff like that. It's freaking awesome. And then we go back to the crowd, and in the crowd we actually have Johnny Storm and aka Human Torch he has actually lost his powers he came back from some space mission or something like that and all an alternate reality I cannot remember but yeah he's basically just lost all of his <laughs> all of his powers for now which sucks but then again we go back to Spider-Man and Electro and of course Spider-Man uses the good old water hydrant trick and I like the humour here he actually pops off the top and no water comes out so then he sticks his head back over the side and the water just explodes out and it's awesome and especially the art, the, I don't know what it is about the art this time but that looks like Black Cat right there, what the hell but yeah, anyway moving on, uh, for some reason he's on top of the Statue of Liberty and he gets a call off Johnny Storm now it turns out that Johnny Storm is actually at the bottom of the Statue of Liberty because he can't get up there and then he starts to explain to him how he's lost his powers and stuff like that and I really like the dialogue between these two especially because they're like long bestie friends type of thing you know and Johnny Storm pretty much gives him a present to welcome him back and it's actually a USB drive with all the TV movies music all the cool stuff of what he's missed whilst he's been gone because remember Peter Parker's been gone like a year or something like that so he's missed out on a lot and what I really love about this issue is the ending Peter actually goes back to his uh, company building and basically turns around and just says yeah we're gonna start making the best super villain prison ever so they're going to try and depower Electro, they're going to try and take away his powers, they're going to cure him, they're going to imprison him, then they're going to build the best supervillain prison ever. So that's not only going to help the company, but it's also going to help Spider-Man as well, because that means less villains to deal with. So yeah, because if you remember, the other prison was blown up, so yeah. As for my final verdict, I'd probably give this an 8 out of 10, mainly because of the dialogue and stuff like that and the art. And yeah, so the story is pretty good, and congratulations to the winner of the giveaway. I hope you enjoy your comic. You'll be getting that code within 24 hours of this video going live. Also, I'll be doing more giveaways in the future. Please hit the like button if you like the video, because it really helps out a lot. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button for more. I'll be doing my issue 3 review in a few days, and I'll be doing Miles Morales review in a few days, hopefully on the day that it comes out. And yeah, don't forget to hit the like button. Please leave a comment in the comment section below. Let me know what you guys think of this comic, and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.